What is up, Pitt fans? Thank you so much for tuning in to Inside the Panthers on YouTube. My name is Stephen Thompson coming at you with another Inside Pit practice report, our last one of Backyard Ball Week. Can you feel it? Keeps getting a little bit closer. Uh, when, by the time you all hear this, it'll be a little bit more than 24 hours from kickoff of the 106th Backyard Brawl, and I, I couldn't be more excited to see the atmosphere in Morgantown on Saturday night. I'll be there at Milan Puskar Stadium, and you know, I've only been to Morgantown once before, and it was for a basketball game. It was a pretty decent West Virginia team. It's a pretty bad pit team, so I, I really don't think that this environment uh, at uh, for a football game will, will even compare, um, especially when both teams are expecting a competitive game, you know. That one time I went into Morgantown, I was or it was already dark. Um, I kind of came in a back way. I didn't really get to see the town swell and build the energy for a game day like I'm sure it will this weekend. So that's really what it's all about, you know, is kind of this, this sense of community that we get from college football, the way that, you know, college towns and, you know, whole fan bases mobilize for games like this, for big games. Um, th that's always special for me to see, I think, you know, it saw it last week, uh, last year for the backyard brawl. You know, you saw it a couple of years ago for the Clemson game and, and some some other things like some Penn State games of the year past. You know, seeing a whole community kind of mobilize, like I said, and build and build and build to this one game is, I think, really special and one of the best things about college football. And that's why I I, I could not be more excited, like I said, to head down to West Virginia on Saturday. So. With that said, let's get into some of what's actually going to happen on that field right after kickoff. Uh, we spoke with Pat Narduzzi today for his final press briefing of the week, and you could feel there was kind of a different level of intensity in his voice compared to the last two weeks and really just about every week uh, of last season, and that includes that lead-up to that West Virginia game that opened the year. Uh, he told us he was – and it was pretty clear that he was not pleased with the – level of physicality from his team last week, uh, not just in the game, but in practice. Narduzzi told us he changed up his practice plans a little bit to get more out of his team. Uh, he said he's not sheltering guys out of fear of injury, and he's just trying to get the intensity up. Uh, he doesn't want the speed and the physicality, and the physicality, I think, is the biggest point because West Virginia is a power-running team. they got a big offensive line. they got a big running back. He doesn't want that to shock any of his players on Saturday night. It seemed like at certain points, especially early in that game, Panthers were a little overwhelmed by the size that Cincinnati brought, um, you know, probably shouldn't have been, but they were, you know, they just clearly did not look ready to handle that. Um, and Narduzzi said, in fact, that he wants the Panthers to be the ones delivering blows early, you know, kind of do a role reversal from what week two was like against Cincinnati. Um, he emphasized starting fast, but emphasized doing it with the run game and the run defense. Um, you'll remember in the uh, oh, last week, they threw the ball in their first three plays, at least two of them were really deep passes, you know, passes of 20 plus yards in the air. And then threw it on four of their first six. And all of a sudden they were behind 10, nothing. And were forced to air it out as they look to get back in the game. Um, Narduzzi believes a lot of the things that plagued Pitt the last time out was, you know, among pass protection, quarterback play, run defense, et cetera. They can all be, that can all be fixed if they start better. I feel like it all started from, a, a slow start. Um, so like I said, those three passes really, they seem small, but when you look back on the totality of that game, they really did play an outsized role and they really did set the tone for how both teams were going to approach that game. Um, Cincinnati was, you know, part of that is also Cincinnati scoring on their first possession and, and stuff like that. But, you know, Pitt throwing the ball three times with no success and having to punt after less than a minute of possession that really impacted the game. So, you know, I'd expect a heavier dose of the run, especially early, because, well, Narduzzi said as much. You know, he said that he wants to run the ball, you know, at he would run the ball 50 times in this game if he could and give Rodney Hammond half of those carries. So I think he he did say he wants balance, but I think he also, more than anything, wants to make a point with the run game. I think something that irritates him beyond anything else is – not just giving up run plays, but not being able to run, you know, big run plays, but not being able to run the ball himself or, or them, themselves talking about the team, you know, defensive, former defensive coordinator, defensive guy that tends to yield a certain kind of personality, a certain, um, you know, desire for toughness and, and a belief that that is how good football teams are built, um, you know, beyond anything else, beyond talent, beyond scheme. It, it's about toughness, I think, to Pat Narduzzi and, I think he will try to demonstrate that his team is tough and that they are not what everyone saw in that Cincinnati game. I think that is 
eight at him. I think it's eight at the team to a certain extent as well. And they're really trying to make a point. So, you know, like I said, he, he, he wants to run the ball 50 times if he can, like he said, um, and I'd expect Rodney Hammond to honestly take a lot of those carries. I think they're kind of, I get the sense that they are done kind of experimenting and diversifying the running back room. That's something that Frank Signetti talked about earlier in the week and Narduzzi uh, reiterated it when I asked him about it, it was, yeah, I'd like to run the ball 50 times and I'd like Rodney Hammond to take 25 of those carries. That's, that was a direct, you know, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but he did use those numbers. Um, So, you know, physical back like Hammond, I'd expect him to get a lot of carries. And also you think about the game that Rodney had with them last week, uh, or excuse me, had against West Virginia last year, kind of makes sense why you would want to give that guy the ball. So, like I said, I'd expect a heavy dose of the run, expect especially early, because I also thought the Panthers ran it pretty effectively when they had to, when they could against Cincinnati. Um, obviously, that wasn't for most of the game, but you know they they ran the ball pretty effectively, and they're going to try to open that up a little bit more. Ronnie Hammond sitting on eleven carries right now. Don't think that'll be the case after this game. I would expect. Yeah, I would be shocked if he gets. I wouldn't be shocked if he gets more than 11 carries in this game alone. I I think that number might be closer to 20 uh, if we're being completely honest. So that's something to look out for. You know, we have a couple other notes, uh, a couple other things we're noting from Narduzzi's final press briefing of the week. Um, Said they're really dialed in on Garrett Green, the quarterback for West Virginia, particularly his ability to run. Um, Said he's like a running back with his vision and ability to hit really tight holes. Um, I think that's connected also to – some concerns about uh, how good West Virginia's offensive line is. Uh, It's a ton of experience, ton of size, and that makes them a huge challenge for a defensive line that is still sort of figuring things out. You know, like the Cincinnati game started really rough. Um, They were getting getting gashed. And it wasn't just, you know, the defensive line, but it was also kind of the safeties who were out of – safeties and linebackers who were out of position sometimes and just not, you know, in position to make tackles that could have made a – you know, 30 yard run or a 40 yard run or a 20 yard run into just like a 15 or a 12 yard run. And those things add up, you know, those are small differences, you know, defensive line can, can only do so much, but linebackers got to hit the right holes and fill the right gaps. And then safeties have to be ready to stop the worst case scenario. So, you know, uh, green can be a part of that. You know, he's a guy who runs for a ton of yards has run for a ton of yards through the first two games of the year. So that's something that the Panthers are really dialed in on and, That's something that they'll really look to correct. So that's another tone setter. It'll be run game on offense versus run game on defense for Pitt. And those things will kind of determine how this game's going to shake out. I think you might get a sense of how this game is going to go very, very early. I don't expect someone to go down, you know, 10, nothing and and then make it spark some kind of comeback. I just don't, don't know if that's, that's especially going to happen. And and finally, I want to talk a little bit about Donovan McMillan who continues to impress. I, I think this is a guy who earned, a lot of points in Narduzzi's book, especially with the emphasis on physicality this week. McMillan was a real hard hitter. He was a good, he played really well, I think, against Cincinnati and kind of found more playing time as the week went along. Um, Narduzzi said he's earning some more snaps uh, just with his play. And I think when you think about how what uh, Pitt wants to approach this game, McMillan's a good fit for what they want to do. They want to be physical, they want to hit hard, they want to set the tone in, in a sense. And this is a little cliche I keep coming back to it but I, I really think it feels like they got out out muscled against Cincinnati and are hell-bent on not letting that happen again so we'll see how that all plays out with that I'm headed out of here thanks for tuning in to another inside pit practice report make sure to like this video and subscribe to us on YouTube that's youtube.com slash at inside the Panthers and make sure to find all the reporting from the rest of pit practices and this huge 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 massive game which you know, could set the tone for the rest of the year for the Pitt Panthers. You don't really want to head into ACC play on a on a low note and going one and two and welcoming North Carolina to Axer Stadium. Uh, this is a game that, yeah, we don't we don't really need to say anything about the stakes of the backyard brawl just because everyone knows about the hatred and the history um, and, and what kind of hype this game has. But there are there is a whole another se- there's a whole rest of the season left to play. There's a whole three quarters of the season left to play and. I think more than anything, Pitt just needs momentum. and They need to get headed in the right direction. So it's a huge game for the Panthers in more ways than one. I'll be down there to deliver uh, all the coverage you need from the backyard brawl. So make sure 
So again, follow us and subscribe on YouTube and check us out at InsideThePanthers.com. My name is Stephen Thompson. Thanks for tuning in to another Inside Pit Practice Report. I'll see you next time.